In this video, I want to talk about how you could use the BPMN notation in conjunction with some of the things that you find in value stream mapping. First, let's start with our BPMN process. Now, in this scenario, of course, I'm using software. You know, can you model on a whiteboard? Um, can you model with sticky notes and, uh, you know, what have you on a flip chart? Of course. Um, in this case, I'm going to be using software uh, to help me do my model. And here I have my typical swim lanes that you would find in a BPMN process and my activities and my start event and my decision gateways and all of the basic, you know, notations that you might find in a BPMN map. Now, if I wanted to incorporate some of the analysis techniques that you find in value stream mapping, let's first take a look at a value stream map and some of the concepts um, that, you, that you use in a value stream map. So when you're creating a value stream map, what you're doing is you are adding activities into that map or processes. And if you notice, you have a timeline down at the bottom. So this represents some step in the process where the item is coming from one step and coming into this step to be transformed in some way, right? Because value stream mapping originated in manufacturing, the assumption is that it's some product going from one stage of that manufacturing process to another. But that doesn't mean that you can't think about uh, an order or an invoice or anything else going through the same set of uh, steps to be transformed as it reaches each person in the process or each system in the process. And the very basic concepts of value stream mapping is to look at time and look at where we are doing value added activities in a process and where we're doing non value added activities in a process. And that could be in the actual step itself or a lot of times it's the wait time that occurs between the time you finish something and it goes into the next step of the process. So what we see is in this particular type of map, what it begins to show me is the amount of time, this is my value added time, 10 minutes, and then I have a wait time of two and a half hours in between these two activities. And then in this case, I have both value added time and non value added time occurring here within the activity. So it's represented by 45 minutes in total, that's total cycle time, and then value added time is 15 minutes. And it aggregates that information across the model. So what we end up with then is in this particular tool, it tallies up or totals up the total amount of time where there's value and the total amount of time where there's not value. And then what you would do is you would analyze your process and say, well, where are there opportunities for me to eliminate non-value added time? And then you use bursts to indicate where you might seek to eliminate that type of non-value added activity or wait time. Going back to our BPMN model, there's nothing that says we can't incorporate those same exact concepts in our BPMN model using some type of text annotation, I can simply annotate the model. And under each step, I can say my value added time in this step is 10 minutes, and my non-value added time in this step is 20 minutes. And then I can think about or, or document the time from the time I complete this particular step till the time I get to the next step in the process. What's the wait time in between? And the same thing, I can simply annotate the wait time. And then maybe what you want to do is color code this particular time. And then we can simply do that throughout our entire model. And then at the very end, using good old fashioned math, we can simply add up those various items to come up with our total cycle times and again, here we can use this to analyze a process, working in a group or any other way, and look to remove those 
inefficiencies within the process and if we wanted to use bursts which is an indicator of an opportunity we could use an image annotation for example to place a burst in our map uh, if we want to use the same symbols and icons that we find in value stream mapping so it's not really as important to use the, a particular tool that lets you accomplish that type of modeling as it is to get the value out of the type of analysis that you're seeking to do. So again, you can combine these techniques, do it on a whiteboard, do it in a piece of software, um, use whatever method you want, but there's nothing that says that you can't combine these concepts um, and use them at the same time.